Hi there, Nico Carver here. For this 5-Minute Friday, I'm going to chat about some of the most disappointing astrophotography projects, the ones that really failed in my eyes for one reason or another. And uh, thinking about this video, I started thinking conceptually about sort of the different stages of an astrophotography project. So for me, it always starts with the idea. And then I pre-visualize what that idea will look like as a finished photo. And then I come up with a plan for how to capture and process to get me to that final image that I have in my mind. And I realized when thinking about this that, you know, I'm a pretty okay processor. So really most of my failures don't come in the processing stage, but either in that visualization stage where sometimes my vision is just really out of whack with reality, um, or sometimes it's a flaw in my actual capture, um, be it poor planning or the wrong gear for the job or something else. So let's go through a few examples here and I'll talk through what I think went wrong, what I learned from each failed astrophoto. The, the, this first one is my most recent failure, um, and it really pretty much just came down to poor planning and not enough time to fix my poor planning because uh, I didn't have another clear night. Uh, the problem here is the dust in Cepheus should actually somewhat extend down here into this part of the photo, and the reason it just cuts off so abruptly there is because this is a mix of data from different cameras and different lenses. And so the top half has all of the data it needs and the bottom half is, is still missing some data from an 85 millimeter lens. And this is the kind of failure I really don't mind too much because all it means is I have to wait for my next opportunity to shoot the bottom part of the photo um, and then I can finish it. And I might even get a chance pretty soon because I'm going out to the Okitex star party in a couple weeks and that's a Bortle one zone. So fingers crossed I can uh, finish this project there and it'll look really cool I think uh, when it's all done. Okay, here's a failure where I had a strong vision, which was to show the Boston skyline, the Charles River, and the entire Orion constellation um, setting over it, all in H-alpha light in, in mono. And I tested shooting um, this a little bit here in Somerville, but without a good landscape, and I thought it looked pretty good uh, from home, sort of, but it, it wasn't perfect. Um, but the first night I set up there, I realized that my plan didn't really quite work with the lenses that I was hoping to use um, because Orion was much higher than I thought it would be for some reason. And so I needed a much bigger sensor or a much wider lens to capture it all. And I was paying by the hour because I was on top of a parking lot. And for integrity's sake, I was only going to shoot it when Orion was actually over the city. So I was short on time, which always leads to bad decisions. And I decided I'm going to try this with this Samyang 14 millimeter wide lens that, you know, is pretty good for Milky Way shooting. Um, but looking at the photos quickly, I thought, wow, yeah, this looks good. You know, the whole field of view is exactly how I want it. When I get home, though, I realize the stars look like triangles. It looks like there's Vaseline on the lens or something. And I realized the likely problem was back focus with filter thickness. Um, you can't really use thick narrowband filters effectively with wide angle lenses without getting tons of distortion unless you are very exacting about the, the back focus. And so I still published the photos, but acknowledged anyone, you know, and friends and things that I didn't think was that great. And I might try again with different gear, like either the Canon EOS RA or something like that, um, because I think the problem was just matching the wrong optics to the camera and filter I was using, so I didn't get that kind of sharpness and detail that I wanted. Okay, if you're still with me, this last one is really a problem with pre-visualization, meaning uh, pre-visualization just means imaging um, or imagining the photo in your mind's eye uh, before you take it. And what I was imagining was this this would be the fill the entire frame here with with nebulosity. But about 83 hours in, you know, the, the bottom half of the photo is still not holding up to the top half. So it's very top heavy. And so what I ended up doing eventually is just cutting off the entire bottom half. But that means 50 hours of work is gone. Um, so from this failure, I learned the best thing with big projects is to continually test, um, bring in the data into PixInsight, look at it, see how it's going to work before going forward. Now, with this one, I just had blind faith that it's going to work out in the edit. I, I thought, yeah, it's going to it's going to look cool in the end, but it just never did uh, sort of meet my expectations for the photo. And so. These were some of my astro failures in terms of the creative process of astrophotography, which is something that I felt like covering and hope to do more of because I feel like it's not talked about enough. 
Um, speaking of that, Dylan O'Donnell just released a great video about the creative aspects of astrophotography, about astrophotography styles and processing styles over on his channel. And I really enjoyed that one and, and do recommend you check it out. Well, till next time, this has been Nico Carver, nebulaphotos.com. Clear skies.